so why don't we why don't we dive in now and actually show people you know how easy this can be and and like I said this is in my mind this is the the mind blowing piece of this is um, it's you make installing an environment whether it's a simple one or a complicated one you really we have made it at PM Square like like uh, just a couple steps and filling out a simple form basically is the way I would describe it to someone who had no um, no context now there's a lot of work that goes in up front right and we've done a lot of that work and this is something we provide to our um, our clients who work with us on these projects, but you know, Chris, let's show them just how easy it is. Like, I want to create a new single instance Cognos server. How can I go about doing that using the techniques you've developed? Sure. So I'll do a quick, uh, very quick walkthrough of S3 and what some of these mentioned repositories look like. So these are the two buckets that we have that we previously mentioned: one containing the CloudFormation templates, and the other one containing the Cognos specific information. So if we look in here. Um, these are the subfolders that I've created, and I've tried to organize it in a couple of ways. One that is, you know, resources that are environment specific, and then you know, assets or resources that are um, uh, environment agnostic. Things like drivers. You know, assuming your drivers are going to be consistent across all your environments, uh, that can be here. That's something that's to be pulled regardless. Doesn't need to be tied to a, sp a specific environment. Um, this user data. So this is the actual install scripts. You know, so for you know, dispatchers or um, single server installs, uh, those can be housed here because again, you install the dispatcher, whether it's in dev, QA, prod, it's gonna be the same, um, most likely. If it's not, that's okay. You can just have an extra script so housed in here. So this is just how I've created it. Um, it may work for you, it may not. Um, you know, good thing here, this can be fully customized depending on uh, workflows within your own company. Um, and then the templates are housed here. So here I've just broken up into the different flavors of install that we'll be doing, whether it's distributed or a single server. And so for here, we're gonna do this version three stack. Uh, the first thing we need to do is grab this object URL. So CloudFormation knows where to pull that template from. And now we can make our new stack. So here we're in CloudFormation. You can see here, here's all the stacks we've created in this environment. And the stack is, um, just quickly you know, while we make this, stack is just a, a collection of uh, resources that CloudFormation ends up creating for you. Uh, here, we have a few options you can see. We can use one that's already ready, which we will do, dropping that in. But you can create your own. Uh, they have a great web interface designer uh, that actually is virtual or is a uh, visual so you can do drag and drop you can also uh, if you're familiar with json or yaml uh, which is um, the two formats that cloudformation supports you can just go in and start coding your own um, also for anyone that is unfamiliar and maybe a little hesitant i have very little programming background experience <laughs> um, uh, when i started this and i still consider myself quite a novice but um, aws has a lot of what they call snippets you know co example code that they provide for all of their services. So if you think, okay, how do I create a DNS entry for uh, application load balancer? Most likely you can find that whether directly from AWS or from some someone's blog or, or, um, or website that, that they have. So we're going through and now we're we're creating the, the stack and we're providing the stack details. Um, and you can see here, we have a number of parameters. So the stacks can be created to be parameterized and support parameters, which definitely uh, recommend doing. Uh, so we'll walk through uh, each of these to see see what this will look like. So first, we'll give it a name. So let's say this is the Cognos sandbox. And then the environment name. So you see here we have the, the parameter that we need, and we also have a little description of what that is. Uh, and then again, this can all be Customize. This is simply what made sense to my brain. <laughs> what what I thought would be helpful if there's you know different workflows, like you know, I mentioned before, different workflows, different patterns, different needs. All this can be customized and configured to what makes sense for for your team and your company. Um, so for here, I'll say this is Cog Sandbox. Uh, so this environment name, what I'm using this for is actually so you see here it's used in tagging resources. Um, this is really critical within. Um, an AWS environment, uh, properly tagging resources for a few reasons. One, 
so you can figure out where everything is. Like if we go over here to our EC2 console and we see all the instances that we have, got a whole bunch in here, right? Some of them running, some of them stopped, some of them terminated. See a lot of these are obviously Cognos specific, but you can see you have that one PA instance, uh, but it can be messy. So if you have a dedicated AWS account, even that is just for Cognos, you may have prod deployed in there, QA, dev. If you're wanting to isolate resources, it's good to, to um, isolate that. Now we can easily say, okay, what are our prod resources? And we can filter on that right away, right? Uh, if we come down here to the tagging, we can see what that looks like. You know, we're tagging the Cognos version, tagging the tier that it's in, so this content manager. Um, is there anything to make your life easier to help you audit and track this? Another thing that tagging is use, uh, really critical for is cost monitoring. So you can see, okay, what are all my tagged prod resources? And you quickly see what prod is costing you versus dev or QA. Yeah, I can, I can say from firsthand experience with um, with Thrive, you know, we when we first developed Thrive, we didn't apply the appropriate tagging structure to it. And, and so it was really hard to figure out you know, our Thrive resources. So, I mean, for those of you who don't know, Thrive runs on Amazon Web Services, right? Um, and so for our Thrive resources, we didn't we didn't have a good way of telling like, well, how much, you know, what's our run rate on, on our cloud spend for Thrive? Once we put the tags in place, it became really easy. It was easy to develop reports and all of that to be able to say, yeah, this is how much Thrive as a whole is, is costing to run. And then each component of it over time, it, critical, I would agree. We did have a question from, um, um, Sanish, who wants to know, and I, Chris, I don't know, I kind of know the answer to this. I don't know if you know more than I do, um, but do you know if licensing gets impacted when using AWS? So maybe I'll say what I know, and then you can layer on if you know more than that, which is, um, uh, so for PVU license, and they're PVU based. So for named user licensing, if you're a named user customer, the answer is no, right? You can deploy as much hardware as you want on named user licensing with Cognos, and you can deploy it where you want. You don't have to worry about it. For PVU-based licensing, it does get trickier uh, because obviously the, the the thing about the cloud is it's a little harder to guarantee, you know, what um, this is exactly where I'm going. <laughs> it's a little harder to guarantee what um, what um, you know exact hardware configurations you use. So there's two layers of this. One, IBM has a really nice license, or um, Amazon has a really nice license manager, right, that allows you to say to put in the parameters of, you know, how much hardware you're allowed to use. And then they will um, gar basically guarantee that you won't exceed that, okay? So the first layer there is like, yeah, it's, it's really pretty simple in, in AWS to say, I wanna configure so that I don't blow past my PVU caps, okay? Now the second layer to that where it gets more challenging is IBM is gonna require you to have ILMT installed. Um, and we have been working with them to try to get them to recognize AWS Licensing Manager as an alternative to ILMT. Now, if you're a PVU customer, you know, you're supposed to have ILMT installed anyway, so hopefully you do. If you don't, when audit time rolls around, as it inevitably will, you know, IBM's going to have some questions for you. Um, and, and if you have ever installed and maintained ILMT, you know that it's kind of painful. So... So that's why we're, we're, we are trying to get IBM to recognize this license manager, but that, that's my understanding of how all this works. Now, Chris, did I miss anything there? Nope, that's completely right. One caveat though, if you do want to adopt this, um, if you're not in a new AWS uh, deployment and you're looking to, um, you really can't back into it. Um, so it, it's a, it works and it actually works really well, but um, if you already have resources provisioned, um, and you want to try to apply this license manager, you, you can't do that. Um, you have to, it, it will only count, you know, once you set up your uh, licensing management scheme, it'll be upon new resources that are created with a specific AMI t uh, type. Gotcha. So it's one caveat, you clearly can't back into it. Um, but, you know, moving forward, you know, if you're looking to upgrade uh, to 11.2 and you want to start then, that'd be a good time. You can uh, you can point those, uh, you can point license manager to those new, new instances. Yeah. Sanish, that was a great question. Thank you. And uh, keep them coming, guys, if you have any others. We're happy to answer them. Yeah. So we'll jump back into this CloudFormation so we can get it kicked off. I'd like to I'm make sure it can uh, complete before, before, we, uh, before we sign off. So yeah, we're, yeah, these we're, first we're, three are just We're starting in. to run a little uh, yeah. low on time here. So these first, these first three are just metadata tagging. You know, 
uh, we went through that. Uh, you know, we're not going to do it now. This is just a simple single server install, but you could easily drop in, you know, the Cognos gateway URL you want to use um, and have it automatically configure with IIS or the right alias, et cetera. Um, here, you know, we're pointing to the, the bucket where our uh, installation media is uh, defining the VPC where we want to deploy to. Same with subnets, if you want to deploy in a particular subnet. Uh, key pair name, so we can RDP. Uh, and then obviously the the location of our RDP source and then uh, configure our server configuration. So how large we want our server to be and then the AMI we're using, which again, that AMI is that machine image that has Cognos already pre-installed. So we're just gonna quickly run through the rest. And just so everybody understands while we're running through this. Now, this is not like if you go to deploy Cognos on AWS, like this is not in these these screens we're showing you and templates you can fill out. This is not something Amazon built, right? This is something that we've created here at PM Square. Yeah, that's right. It, um, you know, if you you want to just deploy on AWS, you can absolutely just go into EC2, launch new instances, and do it like you would now. Yeah, download the Cognos install media to those instances, spin them up, configure it manually. And what we're yeah, watching right now, um, so what we're watching right now, like Cognos is being installed on a new EC2 instance um, live, right, as we speak? Well, this is a bit. So right now, it's, it's again, the CalVormation, there's the, the two-tiered stuff, two-tiered, uh, two layers here that, that we're, we're running on. Cloud, the CloudFormation templates are provisioning the Amazon resources. So you can see here, you know, the IAM profile, so the, uh, EC2 instance can speak with S3, uh, security groups, uh, security ingress rules, um, SS7, uh, the security, you know, the, the system manager documents so I can join the domain, which always takes a little bit of time to create. Um, so this is just the AWS infrastructure and resources that are being provisioned at the moment. Um, once the EC2 instance starts, should start in a minute, that's when you're actually going to see Cognos start to get installed. So when you launch an EC2 instance, you can run what is called user data. Let me see here. I forget where it is. I think it's under settings. Yep. Edit user data. So see here. So this is actually the user data that was executed when this instance. And we'll take a look at this in detail. But what this allows you is you can pass through um, Batch or uh, command line commands, PowerShell commands. If you're Linux, you can bash, pass a uh, bash script through. And what, what this will then do is it will execute on the start of the instance. So in this case, you know, we're this is the, the method that we're going to be using to actually configure and install Cognos. Uh, so yeah, CloudFormation provisions the resources. And then uh, we leverage EC2 user data with PowerShell to install and configure Cognos.